In our previous program, we took a look at something called addition polymerization. Here we're going to look at a second method of making polymers through what's called condensation. So let's start off with the idea. Condensation is the removal of a small molecule, such as water, to form bonds. Let's take a look at how that happens. Here I have an example of my starting material, my monomers, as we called them in the previous program. And I've got two of them here. If I remove that combination from those molecules, I'll produce a water molecule. And the two can then join together to create the polymer that you see over here. Every time I'm joining them, I'm removing a water molecule. As you can see here, I've joined three blocks and liberated two molecules. You can think of this as the n minus 1 rule, where n refers to the number of blocks. n minus 1 gives me the number of water molecules released. Now, water is not the only molecule that can be removed. Here, I can see I can remove something like HCl in this case, and in this case, I would be removing ammonia. All of these joinings would be calcified as condensation polymerization. At this point, I'd like to mention the reverse process. In the reverse process, we add water. So we would be moving then in this direction, where we would add water molecules and that would then revert back to the starting material. So hydrolysis is the addition of water to break bonds. It's worth making a comment here about atom economy. In our previous program, we saw that addition polymerization is considered to be 100% in, in its atom economy. There is no byproduct. However, in condensation polymerization, the production of these molecules with each joining indicates a byproduct. So our atom economy is going to be less than 100%. In order to perform condensation polymerization, we require two functional groups. So let's look at a few examples. Here, I'm going to take the carboxyl functional group and the hydroxyl functional group. And we can see that present in my starting material. There's the hydroxyl group. And right there, we've got the carboxyl group. So we'll begin with the removal of a water molecule, the hydrogen from the alcohol and the OH from the carboxylic acid. They would join together and that would produce a water molecule. Similarly, in the next one, the hydrogen then from that alcohol and the OH from the carboxylic acid would produce another water molecule. That results in the structure we see down below. This particular group. That's an ester functional group and belongs to the class of chemicals that we call esters. This is referred to as an ester link. And the polymer we've produced is called a polyester. Here's a slight variation our car carboxyl and hydroxyl groups coming. You'll notice a difference here that I tend to have two different starting materials. We'll call them A and B. A and B. Up here, these were essentially all the same. This forms a slightly different type of polymer. We call a copolymer. But the idea is still the same. 
I'm going to remove a water molecule there, there, and there, giving me the structure that you see below. It is still an example of a polyester. However, you'll notice, though, the alternating pattern of the groups that I've joined. Now let's take a look at the repeating unit for a moment. The repeating unit in this molecule would stretch from here, say, to here. That would be the repeating pattern. Whereas in my molecule up above, that repeating pattern could be quickly seen, say, from here to here. Much smaller um, repeating unit. Let's look at some other functional groups that can be employed here. We can also use carboxyls and amino groups. And so let's identify them in our molecule. There's our amino group and our carboxyl. From condensation, there's the water molecule we'll produce. There's another one, and there's another one. The resulting pattern now gives us this group in here. This is called an amide link. And we've created here something called a polyamide. An example of that would say be something like nylon. It's worth noting that many biological molecules, such as proteins, also employ this concept of condensation reactions, although the units differ. What I mean by that is our building blocks here are things called amino acids. And amino acids have a variety of different structures. So this amino acid might be called, call it amino acid one, this might be amino acid two, and amino acid three. In humans, we have up to 22 different amino acids. So here, they're removed. And again, we see that amide link. Biologists, however, have a special name for this particular link in here. They refer to this as a peptide bond. Let's employ some of our understanding of condensation polymerization with this question. Here we're asked to draw three repeating units of the polymer made from lactic acid. So I'm going to start off by drawing the molecule such that the functional groups are facing each other. So at the heart of it is this two carbons here. I have a methyl here. I'll put my OH here and I'll move the hydrogen down here and at the other end the carboxyl group. So that's the same molecule. Now I'm going to redraw it so that this molecule has another one identical to it beside it. So I'll put the hydroxyl group there, the two carbon chain, the methyl group again up here, hydrogen here, our group here, and since we have to draw three repeating units I'll put a third in. So we're going to form the water molecule. And remember, that's going to be coming from this and this. That's going to result in the removal of a water molecule. And when that occurs, that will be gone. That hydrogen will be gone. And now I'll have a connection between here and here. 
Again, the OH and the hydrogen will be removed to form my water molecule. And, and then we join. Now I'm not quite finished at this point. I do need to show that this is a polymer and that it continues on and on. So again, that's formed by the removal of the hydrogen and the removal of the hydroxide from there. And then that bond would continue on as would that one. So that's showing three repeating units.